There's embroidery all over the world and every country has their own style of embroidery. And in our little part of the world, in northern New Mexico, colche is the traditional embroidery. Colche is a Spanish revival embroidery art that the women did when they came up the Camino Real to New Mexico. Colche is making a comeback because there are some women that have revived the art. I volunteer at El Rancho de las Golondrinas, which is a living history museum. I fell in love with the history because that's my history, that's the history of the area where I was born and raised. And I'm a retired school teacher, so I want to pass this history on to the children. At this ranch, we have the churro sheep. In Spain, the churro sheep was a peasant sheep because their wool was thick and coarse. When the explorers came, Spain only allowed them to bring the churro sheep to the New World. Those sheep became very important to the colonists here. They became the prize sheep because the colonists needed them for their meat, their wool, and their milk. At El Rancho Las Colindrinas, we start with the sheep. In April, the shearer comes and shears the sheep and once we have the wool, it's washed. In colonial days, it was washed with a yucca plant. The root of the yucca, when you break it open, it's nice and sudsy and soapy. They used the yucca plant for the soap that they needed. Once the wool is clean, harders are used to align the fibers and to get the fibers straight so it makes it easier for the spinner to spin. Now, in colonial days, the Spanish brought with them the malacate, which is a spindle. And you, you roll it on your lap and you spin the wool into yarn. Later on, they probably built spinning wheels because they used spinning wheels in Spain and also in New Spain, in what we call Mexico now. Once the wool is spun into yarn, then it can be woven or it can be dyed with natural dyes. At El Rancho Las Golondrinas, we have a little dye shed like they probably had in the 1700s. And we all take turns working in the, in the dye shed so that we all learn how to dye with natural dyes. Once it's dry, then you're ready to use it for embroidery. During the colonial period, they developed the stitch that we call now the colchis stitch. But in English embroidery, it's called the couching stitch or it's related to the baccarat stitch. It's a very simple stitch. It's a long stitch that is tacked down. The women embroidered on their quilts. It may have been worn out. Uh, there might be a hole in the blanket. So instead of just mending it, they would embroider a a picture on it, a flower, religious images, and pretty soon the blanket was covered with beautiful embroidery and then it became a work of art. There's two types of culture embroidery. One where the textile is all covered and then later on it changed to where the savania, the background fabric, was just embellished with the embroidery. And that's the type of embroidery that I like to do. Because once you spin the wool, and you dye, and you weave, it's a lot of work. And I feel that the weaving that I do, the, the background weaving, is also part of my art. I'm very proud of it, and so I don't want to cover it. So I decorate it, I embellish it with the flowers or the design. 